another episode from the Minecraft Create Mod, where we are going to be taking a look at the five most basic, most simple, most early game contraptions you are going to need in order to get your world up and running. And the nice thing about all these little contraptions as well is that they all run on just one little single water wheel, so they are very cheap to produce even if you are right at the very start of your world. And the very first thing you're going to want to make on your new world is this. This is a little mechanical press, and it actually needs to be one block up in order for it to function. So what you can do is you can just place down any old building block, then place your mechanical press on top of that and get rid of the block below so that you know that it's at the correct height. These are not the cheapest of things to make because they do use an iron block, but they are used to make a lot of the really early game ingredients, in particular sheets of metal, be that iron or copper. And so they are essential for your earliest of games ready for making other contraptions. Now you can operate your mechanical press using a hand crank, just by slotting it onto the side where you've got that little shaft, and when you right click on it you will find that it turns around and it will be able to operate for you. And in order to make it do so, you just need to throw an iron ingot under the bottom of it, and then set it off. So with the hand crank we just do the right hand click, hold it down, and there we go. Our little iron ingot there has been stamped into a sheet. But that is a little bit of a faff, and to be honest with you, it will really burn through your hunger bars, turning that crank around in order to stamp the press down. And so it is a better idea to operate it instead, using one of these little water wheels. And so though, what we can do is we can take that little crank off of there, and instead we're going to put a water wheel in its place just like so. Now this obviously needs some water in order to make it turn, but it only actually needs to have one moving source block against it in order for it to start turning. And so in order to operate this, what we can do is we can take a block of any description, I'm just going to use grass blocks because they are what are around me, and we can just put two of them side by side up on top of our water wheel just like that, then you can surround these with trapdoors. So these are going to be where your water source blocks are about to go, and surrounding them with trapdoors stops that water from running out. Just remember as well to place one on the bottom just there so that the water can't run out the bottom. Then what we can do is we can remove one of those blocks, use the one that remains to place our water source against, and then just knock out the other one, and it's immediately going to start pushing that water wheel around for us. Then we can just seal the water in so that it looks all nice and neat. And now we don't need to waste any of our precious food or hunger resources or anything like that in order to do some stamping. We can just come underneath this, we can throw down our little ingot, and it will do it automatically for us. And you'll notice immediately that it is going much slower, because the water wheel operates much slower, but the important thing is, it is doing it for free. We do not need to expend any more resources in order to do any of our pressing from now on. That will be able to do it for us. And now that we've got these nice iron sheets as well, we're going to be able to make the second of our super basic contraptions. And that is going to be using this, the encased fan. And the reason why we needed those flattened iron sheets is because it uses a propeller. And as you can see, you need four of these sheets in order to create that propeller. Once you've got one though, then you'll be able to make your little fan. Just like before, the fan has the ability to run on just one little water wheel. So you can place it down on the ground like this, and then if we go just behind it, and we take out one of the blocks just there, we can pop down our water wheel straight into the ground. It looks like it's got no spokes, but if we take off a couple more blocks, you can see that it is still there. And then same as before, just have one little moving water source block up against it so that it's able to push those spokes around and it will be working. But of course, at the moment, it's not exactly attached onto that fan. For that, we just need to place a vertical gearbox up against the two so that it's creating a connection in an L shape just like that. The water wheel is able to power our fan, and immediately you can see all of these little particles that are getting wafted out the front of it. So if I stand here, it's going to push me along as it fans me around, I suppose. And you might be wondering, what is the point of this though? And the nice thing about this is, it has the power to do all of your smelting for you very much faster than your average smelter does. And for me, this is where Create really starts to excel. It's this ability to make your life so much easier within Minecraft without needing crazily overcomplicated redstone things. And so now, instead of having to go away and build some great big super smelter, all we need to do is use some trapdoors and block off a little area just in front of our fan, and then into that we can place some lava. And now you can see those particles have changed to orange because they are superheated by this lava as the air wafts through it. 
do note, because it's super heated, if you walk in it, it will kill you. Luckily, I'm in creative, so it's not going to hurt me, but if this was a survival world, I would now be rather crispy. And so, though, what we've effectively got here is a bulk blast furnace. Now, because obviously those particles are wafting items in this direction, I am just going to pop down a block just there so that the things can't get pushed away and out of the area of effect. But this now means I've got this little space here and I can throw all of these stone blocks in there and they're going to get smelted down into smooth stone for me. I can either just throw them in directly or we can throw them in as a big bundle. But once they're all in there, they will all smelt down for us. We can see all those nice black particles coming off to so show that they're smelting. And you can see they're already turning into smooth stone, which happens very much faster than if, for example, we had put this through a regular smelter. Now you can see there is one little stack over there that's obviously gone out of the area of effect. So that's not going to get caught up in the smelter. It does need to be directly in line. So I can just come around and pick that one up and pop him back in again. There they all go, and they will all get smelted up for me. And there you have it. And now if I come and pick these up, you can see that I have got three and a half stacks of smooth stone very much faster than if I was just using a furnace. Now, one thing to note about this, though, is that while it's perfectly capable of smelting down stone or turning logs into charcoal, for example, one thing it can't do is cook up food. So if I pop a little chicken in there, for example, you will see the particles come along the same as if it was going to get cooked up nicely for us. But what you'll find is that it just vanishes instead. It's effectively been obliterated by the sheer amount of heat that is coming through. And so we need to tone down this if we want to be able to use it to cook things. To do that, we can simply remove our lava source and replace it instead with a fire. You can do this with a campfire and you can see immediately that the particles coming off it are black rather than the orange that we had before. Or we can just use a flint and steel as well. That works just as well. I like the campfire, though. I think it looks much more official. But now when I pop my raw chicken down into this little area, you'll see the particles that come off it are white rather than black to show that it is cooking rather than blast smelting. And so it will just cook down nicely for us. There we go, in no time at all. And so, as you can see, though, this tiny little basic contraption, which just uses fire or lava, makes things so much easier and so much faster in your early game world. I would consider it absolutely essential when you first set up a new world to build in. And the next thing we're going to set ourselves up with is a mill. This is a way that you can easily crush down items to make either more of something or to make something that is completely different. And the main three uses of it actually is to either make flour from wheat, get more dyes, or especially to make iron. It is used in the process of getting iron nuggets. So how are we going to get this little one set up? Well, once again, we're going to use one of our water wheels and we're going to place it horizontally just so that it's working with the power being directed upwards. Then we can come just in front of that and we can place down our chest which is where everything's going to be gathered, and into that we're going to have a little chute. Pop your little millstone down on top of the chute, then have another one going into the top of that, and then a chest going into the top of this one. It's going to be quite tall, as you can see. But what this means now is that we can come over and we can grab hold of some cobblestone, for example, that maybe we've mined out of the ground. We're going to be able to pop that into the chest. It will filter through, and now it's going into the mill, and that is just waiting to be activated. And to activate it, we just need to bring power up from our little water wheel down the bottom with a couple of shafts and then put a little cog wheel up against that mill and you'll see it will start turning. And you can also immediately see those little particles that are sort of spilling out of the side as it starts to grind down that cobble that we've put in there. And what will happen is it will fall through the chute and it will go into here as gravel. So we have converted cobblestone at the top down into gravel by putting it through this millstone. And the nice thing about these mills as well is that I can pop another one right next to it and it's also going to work. In fact, you can add quite a few on here and one little water wheel can power really quite a few of them. And then, of course, you just need to add on another shoot up at the top and down at the bottom and double up these chests. Let's we'll do that. Then what we can do is we can double how fast things go through. So now any sort of more cobble that I put in up at the top here it's going to filter down into both of these mills and they'll both feed into the same chest. 
And as mentioned a moment ago, if we take out the cobble so it's no longer making gravel, and then we put in some wheat and a few different flowers as well, then they will all get ground up inside those mills. And instead of getting gravel out the bottom, we're going to start getting dyes as well as wheat flour. The wheat flour being combined with water to make dough and then combined with lime green dye in order to make a slime ball, which is just another way of getting slime if you happen to have no slime chunks in your area. It's just a much easier way of doing it because you can just grind down plants to get there anyway. And certainly in the early game, it's likely to be the gravel that you are more interested in than anything else because of our next little mini contraption. So if we come back over to our fan that's over here and we take out this fire and instead we replace it with some water, we are now instead of cooking, we are washing instead. And so we've got these nice blue particles coming out the side. And what this has the power to do is wash something from something. So if we come and grab our gravel that was in here, and we're going to pop this in front of our washer, just the same as we would have done if we were smelting it, that is going to be able to wash down and become something else. Just pop a block there so that it can't get washed away. And what it's going to do in the case of gravel is it will wash down into mostly flint, and then it'll give us a little bit of iron nuggets as well. And so what this does is it effectively means we can convert cobble into iron nuggets. And there we go. So from that you can see we've got 13 little flints and 9 iron nuggets. So we've got one iron ingot from that gravel. And it's not just gravel that you can wash down into iron nuggets and flint. You can also wash sand down and that will become clay for you. Just like so. You can wash red sand down, and that's going to become golden nuggets. There we go. And lastly, you can also wash down soul sand, and that's going to become quartz for you. Just like so. It does take it a couple of seconds, but it's not too long at all, and it's certainly a lot faster than any other way. There we go. So from those few bits and pieces that are easy to gather, we have got clay, golden nuggets, and nether quartz and a spare dead bush as well. And because washing and blasts, smelting and burning are so useful in a world, it is well worth having both of these contraptions set up, so that you don't have to keep swapping between them when you want to change. And the other nice thing about this is, you don't have to actually use two separate water sources, just use one and put your little water wheels one block apart from each other and they will be able to work alongside. Nice and easy, and then you've got two such useful contraptions that are so easy. And the last thing we're going to be setting up today is going to be our lovely mechanical mixer, also known as a whisk, which works with a basin. So once you pop your little basin down, you can just walk up to it and click directly into it with your mechanical mixer, and it'll peer just at the right height straight above it. It sort of skips a block in the middle, so it's got space for the little whisk to be. And this is how we can mix things up and different ways of making alloys, but one of its most important jobs, especially very early game, is making andesite alloy. And much like the rest of them, it is going to be running off a single water wheel, at the back set up horizontally, two blocks knocked out with that moving water source to get it powered, and then from there we just need to transfer our power up to our mixer up at the top. So if we pop down a couple of shafts and then we put a cogwheel over it, you can see our little mixer has started to turn. But in this instance there is actually a problem. As you can see where it says speed requirement, it is not rotating with enough speed. This little guy needs to be spinning pretty fast in order for him to work. That's okay though, we can easily make it go faster just with a couple of cogwheels. So if we just come round the back and we can remove both of these shafts and that little cog that was just up at the top, now what we're going to do is we're going to place a large cogwheel down directly on top of our water wheel, so that's currently spinning at exactly the same speed as the water wheel, then offset from that in one diagonal direction though, we're going to place a small cogwheel, and this is immediately spinning twice as fast as the first one. If onto this we then place a shaft, and then onto that we place a large cogwheel, so this cogwheel is going at the same speed as the small one, but if we then add another little one just here, we can now see that we have double speed once again, and so our mixer is going four times faster than the water wheel down at the bottom. And we can see now when I hover over it, it doesn't say this is going too slow or anything like that. It is going at a speed that is appropriate for it to work. 
Now, if you're anything like me, though, you really won't like seeing this clipping that's going on just here. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring the whole thing forward just by one. I'm going to build it again directly in front, remove both of these, and then just connect them up with another little cogwheel between the three. And so now, when we look into our basin, we don't have a clipping wheel running through it. It all just looks nice and clean in there. And we can use it to start making things, in particular, as I say, andesite alloy. Now, usually in the recipe section, this is going to require two iron nuggets and two pieces of andesite. Whereas, if we mix, we can see we only actually need one of each. So we are halving the recipe, which is well worth it considering just how much andesite alloy you go through in the Create series. So what we can do, though, is we can just walk up to our basin, we can throw one of our andesites in there, we can throw an iron nugget in there, and it will get to work mixing those up for us. We can just give it a second. Then, as soon as it stops mixing, you can right-click on your basin, you can see that it currently contains an andesite alloy, and you can take that out. And we can just fill that up with andesite, and then we can fill it up with iron as well, and just leave it to do its job. There we go, all finished up. And I'll just take out what's left of those alloys that were in there. And just in case you're wondering, by the way, why when I hover over things do I get a little bit of statistics next to it? Why does it show me shoot information, for example? Well, that's simply because I am wearing the goggles. You can see them on top of my head, and they come out of one of the menus as well. You just need to make them with some gold sheets, which, remember, you will need to use the press for in order to make those. There you go. That is the recipe for them just there. You're just going to need one little golden sheet. Anywho, though, these were five super basic, super easy, and super essential first contraptions to make when you are brand new to the Create mod. These are the ones that I always build as quickly as I can just to get things started. And hopefully they will be just as useful for you in your world as well. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, and I will see you again soon. Happy Minecrafting, everyone. Bye-bye.